so we're on to the next call here. It's cool on this side. They said it's making a funny noise and it's not keeping this area the cooler cool. Like 48 degrees. This side over here is doing better, but it's also on its own circuit, its own compressor. You can see that these are not connected together here. So we've got a thermostat up there. It looks like it's set for 30... 35 area. You can see that the TXV looks like it's R22. Alright. It's really cold there, so it must be letting it through. And this is not very cold, or isn't very warm. So I'm going to tell you it's probably low on refrigerant. I also know they do some funny things with the fans to make up for cold ambient temperatures. So let's go outside and look at that. I'll bet you it's low on charge. It don't look so promising, does it? Looks like somebody beat on it. Holy crap, look at all this freaking shit. Oh, it looks like they've been beating a snot out of that thing. Like it had, yeah, you can, you can hear it. You can hear it going through there. So there's some old school doors. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what's going on in here. You can see that uh, they're probably still bringing the cold air from outside. Yeah. See, they open and close these to bring the air in. It's kind of a homemade looking thing. Kind of helps recirculate the air to build up artificial ambient temperatures. Works out great when, uh, when it's uh, really hot. Not. You can see there's no fan. I don't know if there is a fan cycle. Yeah, there should be a fan cycle control on there. You can see right, right there at the bottom. So we've got a leak. So combine that with, with pulling the cold air in. That's a good portion of it. There used to be vents, I thought, out here on this back wall. See how this one looks. That one seems to be fine. Yeah, here's the back side. So they've got that blocked off. And there's where the outside air would be brought in at, which in theory they've got it closed. You got a little bit of a vent there, so that's not the biggest issue we got going on. So our big problem is it's low on charge. Let's find out where the leak's at. So obviously we've got an issue probably with this fan cycle control. It's set for 250 with a variance of about 60, 70 ish. So that's not working, and it's low. So we went ahead and shut it off. I'm gonna see if we can find a leak here. I'm gonna put a gauge on it, see where we're at pressure-wise, kind of just make sure that that, that uh, fan wasn't supposed to be running. Maybe we got some sort of funky restriction, but like I said, you could hear the refrigerant going through. You can tell it's feeding through the uh, TXV through the distributor tubes. All right, I'm already hitting something right here. Seems like it's around that flare nut. You can see how re reactive this thing is to it when I go beside it. It's not delayed. Literally hits it immediately when it goes by it. Now, does it stay there and keep going off? No. All right, so. Really don't see nothing there too much. But when you go down here to the pressure control, which has it looks to be some oil in it. I'm going berserko. See, it usually happens in those diaphragms. Oh, there's another pressure switch. Oh, I didn't see that one. Okay, so it's that one right there I don't like. Duh. 
can't hardly see with the way it's crushed in here. Get dual pressure switch, one there and one there. So now let's go to manual mode. There. Manual mode stays and it continues to go off. So there you go. Alright, let's stick a little bit of goose juice in there and see what happens. I went ahead and loosened that up so I could get in there. There it is. There she is. So she's leaking there, bud. We're going to go inside and double check the evaporator section, make sure there's nothing in there. Never fails. You just jump to the one. And then I already said that fan cycle control is probably jacked to the max, so probably be replacing both of them. So I went ahead and scanned the evap there, nothing leaking in there, checked the solenoid valve, shut the fans off, checked the coil, scanned it all over. Scanned up in here, nothing in there, so everything seems to be fine on that. Um, we're going to go out and replace those controls and uh, get this thing back up and going, then i got to look at a reaching cooler that's not working it uh, over there where they're making the sandwiches and stuff. This was a lot of fun they put it right there where there's no Schrader core. You got it here where you can't valve it off. So, I mean, granted you can pump it down here, but that right there was the, the fun one. So, to say the least, we got it all in place. We got the new switches marked in here and wired up and the loom around it and wire ties. And shouldn't shake and break itself. Finished tuning in my low pressure switch, got the differential set. Got that done, got my high pressure cutout set, got my fan cycling set. Uh, went ahead, pumped it down, checked my level, marked it on the side there. Good idea, Chris, I kind of like that. Um, other than that, uh, this one's running now. I gotta go look at this little reaching cooler they've got. So uh, basically what we have is a leak on the differential uh, pressure switch there. It was on the high side. Got that replaced, got everything back together, soaked everything. Um, didn't see no leaks. I'm probably going to scan it with electronic just in case because we did put quite a bit of R22 in this. In this old compressor here, it is mineral oil. So to convert it would have been a hassle. You would have had to change the uh, oil if you wanted to do it right. That wasn't really something we, they wanted to do today. So um, other than that, this thing's back together and uh, running good. Going to uh, Kick it back on, like I said, get the pressures uh, up on both sides, check it for leaks with electronic, then head over there to the uh, reach in. All right, scanned it back over just to make certain, and she's good to go. Just gotta make double sure, man, because uh, that would suck to have it leak out and then uh, have to uh, come back, because uh, that's a lot of money. All right, so we got us a Duke here, and it's running. It feels somewhat cool, it's just not hold the temperature from what they're saying. guess that we're probably low on refrigerant just knowing the history of these machines. Oh yeah, it's looking nice back here. Spatulas, cups, all kinds of good stuff. Good. Probably isn't good at all. Do not adjust the valve. Hey, let's adjust the valve. Okay. There it is. That's great. I think yeah, that was inside the last time I worked on one of these. That looks like that is a temperature control. So we could have a temperature control going bad. We could have low on charge. So probably have to melt the ice off the coil first. 
Alright, so we got it opened up because I needed to check this coil to see if it, uh, it's nice. Yeah, that's nice. I guarantee it's leaking down in there. You can see, let's take a turn on the light here. You can kind of see the oily looking mess here. See the shine? The shine there? That's leaking. Guarantee it. Well, let's go ahead and scan up the leak detector and make certain, and uh, then we'll quote them replacing that coil. And I did a video on this one not too long ago, so we already know how this works. This one has electronic control on it, little hair like the, what is it, LAE? Same thing as what the other uh, trues even use and whatever. So, yeah, let's scan this turdy, see what we get. We got leaks over here on this side too. Jeez. Things leaking like a sieve. Leaking right through the coil. Leaking in the middle of the coil too. Yeah, this thing's got problems. It's got problems. All right, well, enough said. This coil's screwed, so we're gonna melt that little bit of ice off. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing recharged. It only holds about, hmm, how many ounces? 14 ounces, so not even a pound of refrigerant. 134A, so go ahead and put this back to normal mode, and uh, we'll scan the backside, make sure there's nothing wrong back here. in there too or it's, could be coming through the trap but all right so yeah no it looks pretty nasty right there so it needs one of these too yeah it needs all kinds of work what else do we got down here in the happy zones Happy little condenser. Happy little condenser. Let's scan the condenser coil too. Well, at least the condenser's not leaking. That's that's good. I think what I'm picking up off the ice there is probably coming from the evaporator section there. It's leaking through the through that wall. This thing doesn't really care whether it's ice or whatever. So that's uh. This down there is going to need remade, and the uh, coil is going to need replaced if they want it to work right. Got it marked on the inside there so that we have note that uh, we found these sort of things, and let's go ahead and finish this thing up and get it back up and going for them. So obviously it's a little low. And that's no good either. Go ahead and get some added to this and see what we can come up with here. I've already done bled everything out. It's pretty much about completely empty. You can't really, like I said, you can't really charge by the sight glass when they don't have a receiver. They usually are using it for a uh, moisture indicator. So we're by far a lot better than what we were before. I took this off just to make sure I was getting the right amount of airflow through there. I gotta check the filter on the front. It didn't, didn't feel like it was sucking it out. Okay. All right, so we have a cold rail here and it's getting too cold, too hot, too warm. You can hear it clicking, but it's not shutting down. So we need to order a new thermostat for that. Uh, Duke, so I'm gonna get a new one of those on there. Let's see, this has been done a little haphazardly. You've got uh, things exposed and shock the crap out of somebody. Other than that, we're looking pretty good. So 
So that's our cold line. Basically kill the power, compressor shuts off. That's in series with it, so they wanted me to look at this too while I was here. And uh, I don't want to mess with the refrigerant charge since uh, but they said it gets too cold and not cold enough. So that's not shutting off. I'm just going to go with thermostat's garbage. We'll leave it in the middle position there and we'll order a new one for it.